Hello everybody, my name is Ben Parks, 225 marathon runner and ultra runner and this is training for a 228 marathon. That doesn't really make sense anymore. Welcome back. This is going to be the final instalment in this little mini series we've had for getting down to a 228 marathon. And really what I wanted to talk to you today about is a quick little summary of my training, everything that I sort of did and I thought was really good, some things I didn't do that you might be surprised about and some things I really want to work on. I didn't really do enough of um, to work on for next time. So yeah, without further ado, here are a few little tips and tricks of things that I did that I thought worked really well. So the first one um, is all about, and I think if you ask any um, experienced runner, they're going to say the main key is consistency. And how can you get that consistency? Well, a lot of easy mileage. And I bang on about this all the time, but I've just run some stats on all of my training. So every single run I did, even when I was really, really trying hard in sessions, my average heart rate for the whole campaign was 142 beats a minute, um, which is super low. Um, but that's how I managed to achieve some really high mileage weeks. So yeah, I did uh, 2,306 kilometres uh, for the whole campaign. I'll put what miles is up on the screen here, um, which was about 144k a week average. Um, so yeah, if you were trying to run um, that sort of average flat out all the time, it'd just be impossible, you'd break down. So the key, consistency, lots and lots of easy mileage and getting those nice recovery runs in as well. So the second point, um, uh, the sessions that I managed to do, um, so the midweek uh, sessions, a bit more sort of high intensity stuff. Um, three key ones that I thought were really important for me. Um, I was very lucky, I went down to a place called Box Hill in Surrey, where you can run um, uphill for about two and a half kilometers on a Thomas tarmac road. Um, so I used to go down there quite a lot and do sort of five by 2K up tempo running. You see a lot of uh, guys out in America do this type of session where they've got kind of the more climate and out of the mountains to do that sort of thing. But I thought it was really, really important. I did that three times. Um, and then just basics, you know, um, sort of mile repeats and kilometer repeats, just on, off, on, off, getting the heart rate really nice and stressed and then super low recovery um, during those sort of off Period. So yeah, three key sessions there that I thought were really good. So number three is all about nutrition. Now I'll cover this in a lot more detail of what I do um, in future videos, um, but as some people know, I'm pretty much um, sort of 99% um, plant-based um, and really try and get as much sort of whole foods, um, a lot of unprocessed um, fresh fruit and veg into my system as I possibly can. So for me, a lot of that was about refueling at the right times of day. Uh, so sometimes before I go out for a run, I'd make sure I had a decent meal to come back to because I th really think it's important to get something in. Kind of within about 30 minutes of finishing your run. Um, if you're super busy and things, then just a standard recovery shake is, is going to be okay. But I'd always try and have a really sort of Decent, wholesome food, um, ready and waiting for when I come come in. And also really concentrate on breakfast in the morning. Um, I pretty much do one fasted run every week, so not having breakfast and going out for a short sort of 10K, nice and easy. But every other day I'd have a really decent breakfast um, and hydrate properly with, you know, some about sort of a pint or a couple of pints of water when I get up in the morning. So yeah, I'm not gonna, as I say, go into too much detail. It's just about having a better sort of relationship with your food, trying to find the best um, sort of sources of your, you know, those fats, carbohydrates and proteins that you can get in that good balance between all of them and really trying to steer clear of anything that's massively processed as well. Um, four, constantly working on uh, recovery type stuff. So every, pretty much every single day, I'll be doing some sort of rolling, whether it's with things like this, my, my uh, roll recovery R8, or just um, this type of thing, uh, just rolling out my legs. Pretty much every day I'm doing a lot of recovery stuff and also concentrating on sleep and stuff like that. So um, I've got a new little gadget I'll be talking about in the next few weeks. Um, you can strap to your legs, um, gives you sort of massages and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so just constantly working on that recovery 
uh, process. You can get out back, back out the next day and hit it strong again. And fifthly, um, with the amount of trail running that I did. So yeah, sort of I'm quite lucky in London, I do have a car and I can get out into the countryside. Um, but you managed to cover about 1,600, 16,000 meters of uh, climbing over the course of this period. So a lot of elevation, a lot of time out in the hills, which is good for a couple of things. It really helps build up that sort of strength. And most importantly for me, it helps with my mindset and sort of that mental thing to get out, you know, forget about the running, um, smashing out sessions and running up and down the roads all the time. Just get out in the countryside, forget about your pace and your heart rate and all of this stuff and just run, have some fun and enjoy being out in the countryside. So yeah, there's sort of five things that I thought were really important um, in achieving what I managed to do. Right guys, so moving on to things I didn't do that you might be a little bit surprised. So the first one is go to the track. Now don't call me out because I know I did go to the track once in Chamonix because it was a super hilly uh, area when I was out in France and I used to get my session in. But uh, yeah, I, kn I didn't go to a track once. Um, I've just found running in the park a lot simpler and easier and cheaper and it just kind of worked out with my schedule a little bit better. So don't get obsessed about having to go to the track once a week. Of course, it's completely great if you go and hang out with your mates and things. But all the sessions I did, you can do around a housing estate um, or just wherever you've got, um, you know, sort of four, five, six hundred meters of road um, that's not sort of lit up and nice and safe. So you don't, yeah, don't really stress about going to the track too much. Um, also, never once went to the gym. I've done pretty much all of my strength um, and conditioning work just at home. Um, just with a few basic bits and pieces, um, like just a few kettlebells, some dumbbells, I've got a, a weights bench, um, and yeah, just sort of a lot of body weight stuff that you can do at home. I'll link a few bits and pieces down below that you can pick up from um, Amazon for very cheap, just some, you know, some therapy bands and stuff for doing some stretching, and yeah, a lot of strength work, and you can do it all at home. It's not, uh, it's really not too difficult. You don't need to be in the gym smashing out big weights and things like that. Another thing I never really did was race too much. Um, I, you know, a lot of people that get in touch with me about coaching, they've got <laughs> like races every two or three weeks, and they want to smash them all. Um, for me, I did two warm-up races um, at the Great South Run and the Geneva 20K. Both of them went really, really well. But then after that, I gave my body time to really sort of rest and recover and get back into regular training. So if you really want to have a really big result at a marathon, don't go having too many warm-up races in the build-up you know, over your campaign. I really recommend about two warm-up races and certainly nothing within uh, four or five weeks of the main event itself. I never really obsessed at all over my sort of weight or diet too much. You know, I, as I said just previously, everything as fresh as I can possibly find and unprocessed and I'm not on the scales and I'm not looking in the mirror and not getting completely obsessed about how much I weigh. I never really know how much I weigh. It's not something I ever really consider. Yeah, of course you can say, well, you're running 100 miles a week or whatever, of course you're going to be fine. And yeah, I could be underweight as well. But I know that, you know, I just don't want to get into a bad relationship with weight and things like that. So I just stay clear of the scales and make sure, you know, I'm looking at my heart rate, I'm seeing how I'm feeling and using that as a barometer for how well things are going. And finally, moving on to a few bits and pieces that I really wanted to do more of, but I didn't. And I think it's going to be really key on my next uh, campaign. So this is talking specifically about training for a road marathon. Um, I really want to get some more strides in. I didn't do enough. I really sort of am a big fan of strides, but I tend to come back for my run and just want to get back inside and have some food in quickly rather than staying outside for another four or five minutes and get those strides. My stride length is something that I have been sort of suffering with. Um, and yeah, I can see all the footage of the race, my, my you know, cadence and turnover is really too high to move down to that sort of next level of getting there for the 220 marathon. So really need to work at improving my stride length. So get your strides in, people, once a week. Um, um, I really want to do some more, sort of more strength work. Um, although I did hold up pretty well in the race, 
I was really proud of myself for really not tailing off too much at all. But I think the amount of strength work I need to be doing needs to be improved. So I'm really going to have de two dedicated strength sessions just at home um, every week to really sort of force myself, put it in the diary, get it in the calendar, and then it's going to happen. And finally, I'm going to be doing some more, and this might be a bit controversial, some more over distance um, long runs, which will not suit everybody, you know, but when you're training for sort of mid 220s to, you know, sort of down to a 220 marathon, I really think you want to be doing some over distance um, long runs at the weekend. So that's going to be anything up to about 50k for a long run. Now, yeah, don't get me wrong, that's not going to suit everybody. I'm not saying for people to go out and start running 50k runs on a Sunday, but to get sort of down to the times that I need to do, I really think that's going to be important going forward. So there we have it guys, I really appreciate the support and you guys follow along um, on this quite crazy journey when we started out um, sort of 16, 17 weeks ago, I, I had no idea <laughs> really we were going to achieve the goal, um, it was a real big sort of risk on my part but so, so proud of what I've managed to put in, proud of myself and all the support from Sarah as well. Here we go! Instagram and YouTube really really helps so much so yeah thank you from the bottom of my heart guys couldn't do it without you um, and really sort of that morale and that building that real sense of community means the world to me so yeah we're going to be going on for another campaign um, shortly I'm going to be filming episode one of the new series on Sunday um, as we you know we, we build and we go forward on this and really try and achieve some spectacular amazing brilliant things going forward into 2019 so yeah guys if you've got any questions any sort of comments and things of what i said you know let me know down in the comments i really i will reply to everybody down in the comments below with anything that you want some advice on and yeah i will see you on the other side in the next one